What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Tuesday, September 24th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy Newsbeat. Stand up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, is driving electric now more expensive than petrol or diesel? This is a great little article out of the UK. We'll stay abroad. Austria election brings into focus Russian gas addiction. Ooh, crazy. Then we'll come back to our favorite state, California. Sues Exxon over global plastic pollution. Unbelievable. I will then quickly finish off and talk all things oil and gas finance. Guys, as always, I am Michael Tanner. Stu is out on assignment, so I am rocking a solo shoot. So let's go ahead and kick it off. First up here, is driving electric now more expensive than petrol or diesel? This is actually an, a study that came out of England. Britain's public charging network, as I'm going to read straight from the article here, is facing criticisms for high costs, making the EV driving potentially twice as expensive as using petrol or diesel cars. On a year-over-year -year basis, UK has actually added about 2,500 rapid and quote-unquote ultra-rapid charging stations, which is about a 40% increase year-over-year. -year. According to some data that was shared with the Times, these chargers cost an average of 80 pounds per kilowatt hour, which makes it extremely difficult for people who don't have access to a low-cost home charging network to actually make the switch. So, just like in the United States, where we spend all of this money to build out infrastructure that nobody uses, they build out all this rapid charging infrastructure, and now guess what? You can't use it because it's so expensive. What's even funnier is, according to that same report, even those using the slower public chargers may pay more per mile than petrol or diesel. I mean, guys, here's the thing. The reason why gasoline and fossil fuels are currently dominating the market is because they're so efficient. It's the lowest cost, most efficient fuel. It's not just the lowest cost. It's not just the most efficient. It's lowest cost combined with the most efficient. That's what everybody looks for. So the market will gravitate towards things that work. People in the UK want to use EVs. They'd love nothing more. We know we know how they are up there in the UK. I'm sorry if anybody's listening to this from the UK, but we, you, know, you guys are definitely a little bit more left-leaning than us here in the States. So we know you want to use EVs. The problem is you can't because there are unfortunately Unfortunately, too expensive, or they just take too much time. I love how they have to call ultra rapid. It's like oh, it still takes what twenty minutes to charge. So they're they're dying over in the UK due to these EVs. And, and, and again, I think you're gonna, you know, this is something Stu and I have talked about. I think you're going to see people continue to move between hybrids, which gives you a little bit of best of both worlds. Let's move on to the next one. Austria election brings into focus Russian gas addiction. This one's interesting. So they have an election coming up here on September 29th, and one of the biggest, I would say, issues right now in this election is where they're getting their gas. This general election, and I'll read straight from the article, is facing growing pressure on both sides of the political aisle to diversify its energy supply away from its dependence on Russian gas just as the economy is stuck in reverse gear. I'll continue on here. No party is expected to win enough seats to win an outright majority. Opinion polls give a slim lead to the opposition far right, Russian-friendly freedom party, and the result could influence the speed of a so-called energy transition. Here's a quote from Stefan Shaman Vukan. He's a senior economist of the Australian Institute of Economic Research. Other countries aren't happy. Austria is still consuming such large volumes of Russian gas. If you guys remember, the EU committed to phasing out Russian gas by 2027 after the invasion of the Ukraine. But, you know, even with that pledge, 83% of Austrian gas was still being imported via Russia. To give a comparison to the rest of the EU, only 15% of gas imported was from Russia. So it's pretty unbelievable. They, they're saying, hey, we want, the low, we want the lowest cost energy. I mean, they need it. Opinion polls do show that FPO support at around 27 to 29%, which it's lead slipping to as little as one point over OVP, with three parties forecasted to win in close to 10% or more. The FPO, which is that conservative-leaning party, says that, Rush, quote, Russian gas must remain part of Austrian energy mix. And they say, well, there's another little quote here. Okay, here we go. Chancellor Karl Niemheimer, he's the Australian's 
People Party um, has pledged to uh, wean the country off Russian gas. The high dependence on Russian gas supplies is a major economic security risk for Austria. Hey, I mean, you're you're probably right from that standpoint. Uh, the ministry said in a statement, is therefore essential for a country to seek further reduce gas consumption and stop buying Russian gas. Well, the question is, okay, where are they going to diversify from? They noted that there's much more Norway gas that they could take, which would be a great boon for Norway. Clearly, they're going to continue to start drilling up that North Sea. So it goes to tell you, having diversification is great. You never want to be lending on one on, on, on one person or one import for your oil gas. I mean, China imports from anywhere. India imports from everywhere. You always want to make sure you are not, you don't have a choke point or you're dependent on one person. So, you know, again, do I think they should wean themselves off Russian gas? I don't know. You should have multiple, you probably shouldn't have 85% of your gas from one country, whether it's Russian or not, you probably shouldn't, you know, wean that down a little bit. The problem is some analysis from the former utility head of regulator e-control, Walter Boltz, says that a 20 or a a sudden stop to russian supplies would likely pick up wholesale gas prices by about 20% for 2 to 6 months. So, I mean, that's a decent amount if you're a lo- middle to lower income Austrian, that's a significant and for 6 months that's a prolonged period. They're obviously dealing with inflation. So, Austria is in a up a creek without a paddle. It's going to be interesting to see what happens in the election. We will be closely following it. Let's move on to the next one though. California sues Exxon over global Plastic pollution. This one's pretty unbelievable, folks. So California and several environmental groups sued ExxonMobil on Monday and accused the oil giant of engaging engaging in a decades-long campaign that helped fuel plastic waste pollution. California Attorney General Rob Bonta, who spoke in an event, guess what? Climate Week in New York City said that the state sued Exxon after concluding a nearly two-year-long investigation where he says that Exxon has been deliberately misleading the public about the limitations of recycling. This all specifically centers around Exxon's promotion of what they were calling, quote-unquote, advanced recycling, which is a process called prololysis. I don't know, guys. I'm not an English major here. All I know is that this process turns hard to recycle plastics into fuel. He said that this technology slow progress is a sign of Exxon's ongoing deception. Unbelievable. The technology slow progress is a sign of Exxon's ongoing deception. Well, maybe it's a hard problem to solve. Has this dude ever gotten out of his little comfy AG office to figure that out or is he too busy hobnobbing on his private jet that he flew over to New York City to talk at quote unquote climate week where they have the AC cranked up and are probably using Russian gas to do that I mean it's just dripping in irony all of this here's the quote from our our good friend Bonta AG over there today's lawsuit shows the fullest picture to date of Exxon Mogul's decades long deception well I thought it was just a two year long deception over this advanced fuels thing but we won't get into that and we are asking the court to uphold Exxon's fully accountable accountable for its role in actively creating and exacerbating the plastic pollution crisis through its campaign of deception. Here's here's Exxon's response. It's a good one, actually. Suing people makes headlines, but solving the plastic waste problem won't. Advanced recycling is a real solution, Has and cal- adding, adding that California has done nothing to advance recycling, which is true. They've done nothing to do that. So this, again, is political retribution because they just don't like ExxonMobil. And I mean, does Cal does Exxon even have facilities in California? I know Chevron does. So it just it just boggles my mind that you with all of the craziness going on in California, everything that's going on, the, the craziness that's going on in California, this dude assigned his staff to try to sue ExxonMobil. And guess what? Newsflash, you ain't gonna win. Because Exxon's gonna have just a few more resources than you have to fight this. And Again, you 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 can't win here. You can't win here. Exxon, if they don't care about recycling and just continue to produce oil, well, they're gonna you know they'll hit them on the climate change front. But if they actually try to do something, this advanced plastics problem, which I is hard. I mean, recycling's tough because newsflash, and I'm pointing at the camera. You guys don't separate your recycling properly enough. If you, the listener, actually separated your recycling better, maybe this stuff would work, but you don't. Okay. So what so they're trying, well, maybe there's some hard to recycle stuff, or maybe there's a mixture. Let's figure out a way to actually recycle that. 
then they get burned for that because it's a quote unquote deceptive process. It's unbelievable. It, it, it's why you should, in my opinion, if I was running X, I wouldn't even worry about this stuff. Just sure, let them sue us. It's a write off that we get. We'll, we'll hire some lawyers. There, I mean, there's other stuff going on. I mean, we know the stuff that's going on in West Texas and their fundamentally and their fundamental disregard for the ability to plug old wells. I mean, they should be focused on that stuff, which is actually harming the environment versus this. Oh, we're actually trying to do. I mean, it's unbelievable. This stuff gets me worked up. You know, I guess environment. You know, you want to read this article. Environmental groups praise the lawsuit. Ocean's plastic campaign director said California's lawsuit will hold the industry accountable and debunk the plastic recycling narrative that holds us back from real solutions. You know what? I want to debunk your Oceana stuff. That's Christy. That's what I want to do. So just, just unbelievable. I got to move on before I get too worked up. Let's move into finance guys. Before we do that, as always, we got to pay the bills. Thank you for checking us out on the world's greatest website, www.energynewsbeat.com. The best place for all your energy and oil and gas news. Stu and the team do a tremendous job making sure that website stays up to speed. Everything you need to know to be the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy and the oil and gas business. Go ahead and hit the description below for all the links to the timestamps, links to the articles, and check us out on Substack, theenergynewsbeat.substack.com. And you can also check us out at investinoil.energynewsbeat.com if you are interested in our exclusive direct working interest project that we are really excited to be partnering with the team over at Pecos Country Operating. Again, that's investinoil.energynewsbeat.com. Pretty wild day for the oil markets here. We'll start overall, though, S&P 500 up about two-tenths of a percentage point. NASDAQ up about three-quarters of a percentage point. Or excuse me, three-tenths of a percentage point. Man, really off there. A two-year yields down a half a percentage point. Ten-year yields absolutely flat. Dollar index basically flat, maybe up a tenth of a percentage point. Bitcoin was down about a quarter of a percentage point, but still $62,445. Crude oil, after a wild swing, was up on the overnight trading session to about $71.65, spiked briefly up to about one seventy or about $71.71, and then took an absolute tumble all the way down to $69.65. And as we record this here at about two. 30 here on the 23rd. It stands at about 7045. So that's down about three quarters of a percentage point. Brent oil is actually up three a quarter of a percentage point day over day. Natural gas up eight percentage points after again, we'll get to kind of why natural gas is up for that reasons. And then we did see the XOP contract, which is our EMP stocks, our basket of EMP stocks. It was basically flat up about 0.05 percentage points. I mean, oil and gas prices really swinging mainly due to the fact that there's a new hurricane that looks horrible that's sweeping through the Gulf. All of the most of the production will end up being shut down. So I think some of that price action, what you're seeing specifically on the natural gas side is due to that. But $2.60 gas, I mean, if that if, if there's something, you know, more to this, which again, it's it's a lot of the storm worries. So I don't want to say, oh, this is a movement to the upside. We are hopefully moving into the winter season where maybe we see a little bit shift in gas prices. So, but we will see what happens after this hurricane. We hope everybody and our and, and our oil field workers out there in the Gulf of Mexico stay safe. We really, we really hope that. It was interesting to see. We did see Euro business activity quote unquote contract sharply and unexpectedly this month in which was kind of not picked up on by the streets. We did see here's Dennis Keisler, senior vice president of trading BOK Financial, disappointing economic numbers flowing from China along with a surprise slowdown in European manufacturing is placing crude demand at its lowest levels so far this year. Not not good. Supply concerns also stemming from the ongoing Israeli airstrikes on Hezbollah has also helped support oil prices. I mean it, it could be continuing to, to go crazy here in terms of what could happen. We also did hear on on, on Monday from Chicago Fed President Austin Goublet or Goosby, whatever his name is, quote unquote, he said, many more rate cuts over the next year as banks, central banks seek a soft landing for the economy. So, and you can see it up on my backside there on CNBC. So it looks like there are things happening there. So who knows, folks? I don't want to come out and say, oh, look, it's ready. It's not ready. But right there, there, you know, we could see a lot more rate cuts, which could be interesting. That's really all I've got, though. Everything else on, on, on oil was was pretty, fl pretty, pretty chill. There was some interesting Twitter stuff going on. You know, it looks like there's, 
rumors of, of, of it gearing up for a specific, some M&A action. So we will be covering all that and a bag of chips as it comes through, guys. But with that, I'm going to let you get out of here. Get back to work. Start your day. Stu will be rocking a solo show tomorrow. I will be back in the chair for the Thursday show to help wrap this whole thing up, guys. So I will see you Thursday. Say, say hi to Stu tomorrow. We'll see you then.